July 1966. Schools had been indefinitely shut down for a month when the rain started, and the children of Shanghai came out in packs to play. The first month of no schools and no responsibilities had spilled feral energy into the streets. Hardly anyone spoke of poetry anymore, unless it was coded in another kind of poetry. It was dangerous to be precious about the lakes and the summer willows that had been fetishized by the old masters. Now it either served the revolution, or it was an act of sabotage. Beauty was a distraction. It was an indulgence, and all the things that carried it, all its vessels were to be burned. Burn it down, the kids shouted, flicking matches at anything during the hot, dry month of June. The sudden power reversal, the young and rash were now the enforcers, the ones who dealt punishment, made some kids despotic, some giddy, and some so terrified they went into hiding, though everyone had to come out eventually. The kids who liked breaking shit, and the kids who regularly had shit broken across their bodies, were the ones who formed packs and marched up and down the streets, carrying glass bottles beneath their arms to throw at any woman who still wore her hair loose and long. That was piggish bourgeois decadence. Or anyone who reeked of being an intellectual, which could have meant someone with squinty eyes from reading too many books, or someone with overly relaxed eyes from a lifetime of being spared hard manual labor. Anyone could be named a counter-revolutionary, Anyone could be made to crawl like a dog through the streets until their knees and palms were rubbed raw to the point of exposing cartilage. Faster, 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 the kids cried. Enough, enough, the adults begged. In another month, some of the children would name their own parents over something as trifling as an expression. Maybe someone's mother had almost smiled when hearing a story about Mao stumbling on some steps. Maybe someone's father had said flippantly one night, would be nice to go to bed full for once. Anything was fodder, and all gossip could turn into serious allegations that so-and-so wasn't down for the struggle. The kids who were willing to turn in their own parents were rewarded, rose through the ranks fast. Everyone knew the fastest way to the top was to be someone no one wanted to cross. Some of the children started wearing their parents' old green army uniforms, comically big and pocked with moth holes, redolent with black mold. The serious ones memorized every aphorism from Mao's little red book and went around quoting lines like, a revolution is not a dinner party, or writing an essay, or painting a picture or doing embroidery. It cannot be so refined so leisurely and gentle, so temperate, kind, courteous, restrained, and magnanimous. A revolution is an insurrection, an act of violence by which one class overthrows another, at the slightest offense, like if someone licked their lips when walking past a stall selling hot, salted soy out of plastic bags for four cents a bag. The desire to have a mid-afternoon treat was the desire to feast, and the desire to feast was wasteful and self-indulgent, the opposite of resisting bourgeois greed and capitalist filth. The serious kids scrounged up scraps of red silk, inscribed the words Hong Wei Bing, and wore them as armbands. The less serious drew elephantine balls hanging under a tiny penis, or a woman with big juicy tits squirting fat droplets of milk into her own mouth. They grouped themselves according to Long Tang, and Nan Chang Long Tong had a reputation for being the most ruthless and the most creative. There was no injury too small, no grudge too petty for these children to avenge with the kind of energy that, in another world, at another time, they might have saved for birthday clowns and pony rides. The day before the rain started, some kids from Nanchang Long Tang had strung up Teacher Liu to a poplar tree that was still modeled from years back when people had crowded around it to peel off slabs of bark for food. One of the kids Teacher Liu beat the most frequently had a twitchy lip from all the times she'd slapped him across the mouth with a ruler for answering math problems wrong, earning him the nickname Twitch. Though his closest friends knew that his own father beat him much more savagely than Teacher Liu ever did, 
and it was far more likely that his mouth twitch had come from the time his father tied him to a chair and flicked rocks at his face for hours, until finally one of them knocked out his front tooth. And he had come up with the idea of carving two plus two equals five down her arm with a shard of glass, knowing there was no greater insult than to brand her with bad arithmetic. She gave the hardest tests of all the middle school teachers, often pre-quizzing her students on units that she only planned on teaching months later.